All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is another burner. Okay, and this time it is white to move. And this game is from Hungary, 1978. Between the player, female players, Ivanka with the white pieces and Hun Fine with the black pieces. Again, if you want, you can pause the video, set it up on your own board or whatever. I suggest that you leave the engines alone and just try to um, work out the plans, the objective and plans for each side here. All right, now we're going to jump into the analysis. All right, first thing, like I said, is count up the material. You'll see that black is down at pawn here. White has six pawns and black has five pawns. We also notice that on the queen side, white has a nice three to one uh, edge. Okay, the only thing is that white's majority is somewhat crippled due to this backward uh, station of the B pawn. Okay, if he tried to advance his B pawn, the position would just collapse immediately over there. So even though he has a three to one majority over there, it's it's not a, a good, it's not a qualitative majority. It's, um, it's bad. Also, black centralized king is pretty good also. So he, and he uh, commands a lot of space on the board. So these are advantages in black's favor. Other thing is he has a four to three majority on the queen side. All right. And um, so black, nevertheless, um, being down material is uh, basically in the position where he is trying to hold. White is up a pawn here and um, white should be trying to figure out how to win this game. OK, but what you know what should we be trying to do we already know that we would like to push the queen top majority but for reasons aforementioned cannot do that right now all right so the next plan to try to think about is to try to get black's king out of out of uh you know out of the uh, d4 square and perhaps if white can install his king and say c3 or something then he can play a move like b4 okay but white has to be careful that when he moves his king or she moves his king, her king over that black's majority on the king side doesn't become an issue all right so with that in mind white played the move h4 okay this cripples the majority of black now if black plays g4 right to try to keep the majority healthy well that loses right on the spot the f takes g4 h takes g4 and then h5 and for those of you that don't believe that pawn will queen on a dark square checking the black king on d4 so h4 and black responded with g takes h4 but now the problem is these pawns these double pawns in the h file pretty much no good you know if the advance then black the white just captures and so at this point white does not have to really worry about what black is going to do on the king side so king f2 is played now we see this idea with the zugs wing <clears throat> going on and we see that white has taken this um, uh, opposition if you look at these squares white has taken like a direct opposition here and one thing that happens is um, another reason by, b behind this pawn sacrifice here is that one of the methods of winning there's a couple of moves that could be tried but one of the methods to try for a win is offer to create a position where the opponent is forced to move his king at an unfavorable time and the way you do that is by creating a pawn structure where all the pawn moves are basically exhausted for instance all the pawn moves are blocked or if he does a pawn move it just loses a pawn outright 
So for all intents and purposes, it makes it where the pawns cannot be moved, and then he just has to make a detrimental king move. So after after uh, king f2, you see black has taken the opposition, and um, excuse me, white has taken the opposition, and so he moves to c5 because the problem is if the black king goes too far away, then uh, um, the c pawn will queen. So if he like jumps down, comes down here, for instance, then the pawn will start racing up the board. This liability keeps black in a real bad spot, and then the fact that he can't move his pawns really, and he can't move his king too far, this creates winning opportunities for white. Okay, white has to be careful. Of course, not, again, like I said before, not to wander too far away from the king side due to these possible breakthroughs so king f2 king c5 right sorry about that king g1 and now we see this idea of h4 coming to fruition by black excuse me by white can you see what it was now right the sacrifice the pawn and then just simply come to the king side and sweep up sweep up these pawns right here and then of course push his own past pawn her own past pawn I keep forgetting their females because black is tied up right here and has to keep an eye on this pawn so after c5 king g1 black just simply sacrifices plays h3 and then after g takes h3 plays h4 which shuts that plan down you see so now there will be no penetration by white on the king side okay but what it does is it aids the other plan that white has which is to create a zug's wing a uh, position for black so now king f2 King d4, there's that opposition again. So now black gains the opposition and wants white to um, have to move. Because remember, this this is not a real legitimate threat because of c5. He just gain, he just wants to gain the opposition, so white has to move. Black wants to be able to go back and forth, back and forth. Because that's all he can do and try to draw the game. So after king e2, alright. Now... The problem is if king c5, then white makes progress with king e3. I'm sorry, not king e3. That's would be illegal. King d3. So you see the problems that black is faced with. And let's say he tried to, you know, just come in here for all intents and purposes. Of course, not to take that. He can't. But just to be able to go back and forth. You see, and so black is like a sitting duck. He would come back and then the pawn would just drop. So, after king e2, black is trying to hold his ground and black said, you know what, it's a good time to play e4. So e4 is played. F takes e4. King takes e4. And again, black has direct opposition. And this is what black wants. King f2. Okay. Now black cannot get direct opposition. Here. Black can get this angular op opposition here. But then, after king d4, for instance. Matter of fact, I already analyzed it. After king d4, then just king f3 attacking the pawn. And then, that's all she wrote. The decoy. And then, of course, there's no need to go any further with that line. So after king f2, black played f3. Again, the idea being force white back. Problem is, though, always is this pawn right here. There it is. Force black away, takes, and the rest is history. And 
black is just a few tempo tempi too short and white will queen first and this pawn will be here when white queens so uh black was forced to resign you know and but notice how that seemingly complex looking ending broke down to this simple um king and pawn ending now if i showed you this position at first and said white to move all of you 100 percent of you even the babies would say h5 you know if i jump back a few moves and say okay white to move and win i would say 90 percent of you would just pick c5 understanding the decoy motive You know, but now if I go back here and ask you to devise a plan, then you might have a little bit more trouble. Now, H4 was the plan chosen by e, the player Ivanka in this game, but there's other there's other plans, and that's why I ask you to you know when you get a chance to set up the board and think about the position. H4 H4 was one way to go about it. There's other ways. You know, there's um other ways to um. To go about it, but um, the the idea is to have a plan, and that's the most important thing. And so h4 with this plan of penetrating with the king on the king side, and um, was a good plan. And then it kind of provoked Black into you know putting himself or herself in like a zigzag situation by closing down the uh, the king side. Okay. So that was a good, you know, good, um, good end game, king and pawn end game, uh, uh, to learn from. All right, so that is it for that one. See you later.